Hi, my name is Jason Vilmer with STS Telecom. We are a small cell phone repair shop in Farmington, Missouri. Uh, we specialize in logic board repair and really micro soldering and down troubleshooting and down to the nitty gritty where a lot of the other shops don't venture. Um, we were mentioned in a article um, or a post by uh, iFixit as well as uh, Mac Rumors and um, there's really a lot of a lot of truth behind these posts and and this widespread problem so uh, i'm going to try really hard to keep this on topic and not stray too far i've, I've got a real issue with straying off topic uh, but anyways for the purpose of this video um, i'm going to be putting apple consumers into two different groups um, group a which is free thinkers people that use reality and, and logic to formulate opinions and group b um, we're going to call Apple Lube. Those are the people that have any kind of an issue with their phone. They take it to the Apple store. They accept whatever solution it is that Apple puts on the table. And these people are just like right here every time they have a problem. They let Apple do whatever they want. And you know, that, that's not a bad thing if they've got the money. That, that's fine. You know, there was a, a study here not too long ago. Here I go straight off topic. A study not too long ago where um, scientists hook probes to people's brains and they showed them pictures of like the Christian Bible um, and they showed them pictures of, of religious things that would that would spark like this religious feeling inside of them and they studied which part of the brain that got activated whenever they would show these people these pictures the really funny thing is is that whenever they would show them pictures of Apple flair like you know the Apple logo or an Apple product it would activate the same parts of their brain so you know, that, that might have something to do with why there's so many people in, in Group B. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I'd like to address some of the comments that I've seen under those videos. I, I don't have a list or a script here that I'm going by. And um, as you'll notice, I'm an Apple consumer. This is my personal phone. I'm in Group A. I'm a free thinker. Now, that's not just because I'm, I'm all for repair. There's going to be plenty of people in Group A that still don't want to go to an independent repair shop and they want to do it through Apple. And that's fine, but those people still understand that there's defects going on, and, and you know they, they understand that Apple's not perfect, that there's issues with the you know there's there's issues that are going to come about. Um, so, anyways, uh, one of the, uh, there's going to be sort of a different genre, a group of different genres of comments here because I've seen multiples of each, each comment, and one of the ones that I've seen was people that are denying the fact that this is even even an issue at all. And they're saying that the one guy was even a repair shop. He's like, I'm a repair shop that does X amount of phones, and I'm not saying that there's not a problem, but I'm just saying I've never seen it. Well, dude, if you're a repair shop and you're working on Apple products and you've never seen this problem, how are you staying in business? Because you clearly don't have enough traffic moving through your front end. You, you, I mean, you, you, how are you paying your bills? This is definitely a huge problem. So that, that's one thing I'd like to address. I think it's pretty damn obvious that there's a huge problem here. Um, one of the other comments that I've seen a lot was about um, precision. How, it, how can any repair, all any repair shop is going to do is, is tear up your phone. Uh, independent repair shops don't have the precision. They're replacing these chips by hand. Well, you don't have to be that precise. And as a matter of fact, Apple isn't very precise. You take a look at a factory Apple board that's never been worked on. And look at the components that are sideways. Look at the big filter. Look at the big inductor next to the Mason IC that's always just barely on the pads. A lot of times it's all the way off to the side and it's, it's leaning over on the Mason IC. That's how Apple soldered it. So there, there's your precision. When it comes to putting these chips on the board with precision, physics does the work for you. You have to give it enough to, get it, to give it close and all of those connections Physics and surface tension will pull this chip exactly where it needs to be. Apple depends on this as well in their manufacturing. Independent repair shops really aren't doing it much different. And you want to talk about independent repair shops not doing it as precise as Apple? How's your iPhone 6 Plus doing that Apple put together with precision? So that's another, that, you know, that, that's another one. Um, there really is just, there was a lot of negativity in the comments under that. And, I, you know, I don't have time to get in on those, those comments and respond myself because if I get in on, on that argument, uh, <laughs> you know, I just, I don't have time. I'll wind up getting wrapped up in it and, and arguing. And I just, I'm not that type of person. Um, I pretty well stick to myself and I try to remain neutral on most things. Um, however, whenever I, I, I see 
our business and other businesses like ours getting directly insulted by people that don't have a clue what's going on, I, I really feel like I, I'm, I'm forced to sit here in front of this camera and, and, and talk about it because right after I hit stop on this video, I have to head to the back and start doing iPhone 6 Plus touch defects. Um, since the last time I did a video repairing this defect, I have fixed almost two dozen of these, these things. Um, our volume of this repair, it, it just keeps climbing, and a lot of that is from the videos that I'm putting online, but a lot of it also, I think, is from these phones starting to get to the in, end of their lifespan. Um, you know, when you, when you spend that much money on one of these products, you don't expect it to last two years. You shouldn't expect it to die right after the warranty's up. So, you know, Apple's not really lying. They're not really being dishonest. So when you take your out of warranty device to Apple, you know, they guaranteed it for a certain period of time. You're beyond that period of time. Their, their work is done. So I don't know how much can be done in the way of uh, any kind of a class action lawsuit or getting them to do anything. So um, really what's happening is uh, there's some iPhone 6 Plus users. That, that's, that's another comment that I've seen all the, all the time was just people getting on there and, and posting and saying, hey, I got an iPhone 6 Plus and I'm not having any problems, which is cool because negative attention, it, it tends to get the most attention. Um, so you'll see a lot more negative attention. But um, So that, that's another type of comment. They get on there and say, hey, I'm, I'm not having any problems. Every, everything's good. Um, I've gotten sidetracked a little bit here, so I've sort of lost track of where I'm at. I'm, I'm 40 repairs behind, and uh, 25 to 50 percent of those all the time is fixing the iPhone 6 Plus touch defect. And, you know, a lot of you people in, a lot of you people in Group B, I can understand where you're coming from and, and talking about precision and why you would get the feeling like anytime you send your device in for this kind of repair, you're going to get screwed. But in reality, Apple's the one that's screwing you, but you don't care. And if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it because it don't affect me at one bit. Just don't criticize my business for it because Apple ain't all that perfect. Um, where was I? So I can understand why um, some of you people in Group B will feel like independent repair shops are just going to botch it and, and they're going to tear it up um, because there are, there are things that can go wrong with the repair and 9 out of 10 shops that you send your device to to get this Touch IC problem fixed, they don't address those other problems. They're going to put a Touch IC on your phone and they're going to send it back. That's a big problem because there's a lot of other connections around the Touch IC. There's a lot of other connections on the other side. So if the shop that you send it to doesn't address all those other connections and make sure all your, your, your sensors and cameras and everything work right, um, you're going to wind up getting a device back that has a working touch screen but no ear speaker. Or you, your touch screen works fine but your front camera no longer works. That's because there's all these shops that are wanting to jump on the bandwagon and start replacing these ICs but they're not taking the time to learn the circuitry and the schematics to troubleshoot some of these other issues. So a lot of you people in Group B might sound like, oh, here he goes, talking about other issues. Well, you know, Apple's not warranting it one bit. They're not helping you. They want 325 bucks plus tax and your old phone to fix it. And here we are. We fixed this problem. Our normal warranty period is three months, but I'm telling people forever. Um, I'm telling people we'll go way beyond three months. I'm not really giving them a specific time frame because I feel comfortable with being able to warranty this product. Um, Apple's not warrantying at all. So here we are, independent repair, giving you a better warranty than what Apple is on their defective product. Now, okay, I'm going to move on here quickly to, I got to keep this short because I, I, you know, I, I'll wind up sitting here talking and rambling and getting off topic, but um, I really need to be working. I, I don't want to be doing this video right now, but um, I feel like some of this stuff needs said. Um, one of the other genre of comments that I've seen was people dogging the shield that is getting soldered to the back of these boards by a lot of independent repair. Um, I give credit to this future proof shield to iPad Rehab in New York, uh, Jessa Jones. Um, that shield has really saved me from, from a, a couple of nasty touch defect repairs where, you know, a lot of these phones you can, you know, I'm getting off topic again, but a lot of phones you can send them back out without this shield. I'm talking a large percentage of them, but there's a certain percentage of them that are always going to come back. There's a certain percentage of them that have this issue resurface regardless of whether or not the phone was bent. 
Um, I've replaced the ICs on these boards, and by the time you get the board back into the phone, have flickering gray bar again. And um, from the time you see that flickering gray bar, it has to have IC replacement to fix it. It's like, it's like the chips are damaged. You can't get away with reflowing them. So I don't think it's only a matter of solder ball being cracked. But, um, so I think there's a couple of, of, of triggers for this defect. Bending is most certainly one of them because you can take a phone that just continually gets the gray bars no matter how many times you put ICs on it. Um, and you can solder the shield to the back of them and it absolutely fixes it. Um, now there might be one once in a great while that, that it won't fix it, but I haven't ran into one of those yet. Um, any of them that I've had come back, that shield fixed it, and now every one of these that I repair gets a shield soldered to the back of it. You know, it, it, it's, it's really something how you can feel the 6 Plus and, and how flexible it is um, with a normal board in it. And after you've put that shield onto the logic board and reassemble the phone, I might be nuts, but it actually feels like it's added a little bit of stability to the phone. So maybe Apple went about this the wrong way and they put all these clever bins in the phone and, and used engineering to decide where to strengthen it to try to make this big flat piece of aluminum not bend. Maybe they went about it all the wrong way. Maybe they should have just soldered a big ass shield to the back of the logic board and bolted the logic board down and used that to strengthen the phone. Here I go getting sidetracked again. So anyways, I've, I've covered a, a, a few different types of people here. Um, the people in Group B, the ones that, that run to the Apple store and they're like, help me, anything you got to do, just help me. Um, they're, they're always going to be against independent repair. They're always going to have a problem with this and they're always going to feel like Apple's the only one that can help them. And you know, if they've got enough money to, af to afford that crap, um, then, you know, fine, let them, let them run to Apple. Um, but as an independent repair shop that fixes this successfully, fixes it with a warranty, and does this with high precision, I feel like I really need to stand up for ourselves and other repair shops doing the same thing because there are people out there that have a really, really bad idea about what's going on. And, you know, maybe they've, maybe they've sent their, their board off to some swanky shop and got it back with a bunch of crap messed up on it, knocked off the board, and they've got it in their head that that's what all shops do. But um, there are people out here, me being one of them, that run a honest business and give a guarantee with this service that is beyond what Apple's giving you. Uh, Apple's just telling you, hey, 325 bucks, you know, 325 bucks or whatever they're charging now and your old phone and we'll replace it. Do you know what Apple is going to do with your old phone after they charge you $300 and take your old phone from you? They're going to take it and fix it and then they're going to sell it to somebody else for 300 bucks. If I were to do that as a repair shop, I just, I don't think I could get away with it. I would have such a bad reputation. Stand there and lead somebody to believe that their device has an issue that is not repairable. Convince them into giving me $300 and their unrepairable device. And then later on fixing it and selling it to somebody else. I would have a bad reputation. Nobody would be bringing anything here. I'd have the reputation of the guy that that talks people into giving up their good devices and fixing it. Um, when I know fix something, it goes on the part shelf. If, if you know, most of the time we send it back or give it back, but when they don't want it back, it goes on the part shelf. I don't tell them no fix, and then fix it and sell it to somebody else. That's that would get me in trouble. But you know, I, I'm not Apple, so you know, and I really don't even know that's what they're telling people. But to me, that that's what it feels like. I see these people giving them three hundred dollars and their old phone when the phone only needs a $2 part. So I would like to talk a, a little bit real quickly here about um, uh, the PC boards. I've seen a comment under um, on the post on Mac Rumors. There was a comment on there by a guy, and I scrolled through it this morning, and I really tried hard to find it. I, c I couldn't find it. There was a comment on there about the, uh, the manufacturer or the manufacturing process of the iPhone 6 board compared to the iPhone 6 Plus board. They were like, radically different and he's this guy said that the reason this defect is so rampant is because um, the board itself is manufactured differently or, or there was manufactured by a different person he had an acronym for it so maybe somebody out there can can tell me but when I seen that I thought there you go because I'm looking for something else it's not it, it's not just bending but bending plays a big part of it. I've seen this, this issue surface. I mean, a board that I was able to, to push on and have 
perfect, you know, everything just perfect, and then reassemble the phone and have gray bars, you know, it'd be different if I sent the board back to the customer and then them call me and said, hey, it's doing it, I would think they bent it or something, but um, this one happened and, and I know it wasn't bent. So th there's more to it than just the bend gate that everybody's talking about. However, the bending is a huge part of it. If you stop it from bending, stop it from moving, um, it, it seems to fix it. But I, what I find really strange is that once you see the gray bars, it looks like whatever defect is there has actually damaged the IC. So, wow, that's really weird. So there is some engineer at Apple that knows a lot about this. Somebody at Apple knows exactly what's going on here. Personally, I feel like it's some perimeter that's going out of range, um, and the perimeter is probably set by a resistance, or excuse me, a resistance or a voltage level coming in or out of a chip. Um, there's some engineer at Apple that understands exactly what's going on with this. Um, they're deciding to keep it quiet, probably for a dang good reason. I imagine this would be a, a crushing blow to them if they wound up having to make this right, even with the people that were out of warranty. So um, I think that's about all I have to say in this video. Um, I don't have anything against the Apple people that are just like, give me my iPhone 7 quick, my 6 Plus is quitting, I know you did a better job on the iPhone 7 because you said so. Um, I don't have anything against all of you people, as long as you're not bad-mouthing the independent repair shops, because we're a repair shop that does a dang good business. Um, if something we does don't work, we don't want your money. If something I fix for you isn't doing you any good, you're not getting what you paid for, I don't want your money. I'll, I'll happily hand your money back to you, because I, I don't want it. I only want it if I've provided the service to you that I've guaranteed. So I'm going to try to cut this, this video as little as possible. I'm really bad at talking in front of a camera, and I get, I get straight off topic. Um, this is my first time using this microphone because, well, um, it will sound like I'm in like a, a long hallway without this microphone today because, because of where I'm sitting. So um, I just wanted to speak up and talk about this defect and um, speak out about the two different types of Apple fanatics that I see. Um, I'm one of the ones in Group A, um, and those people, if Apple's got a better deal than independent repair, fine. If you can be in Group A and you just don't trust in independent repair, that's fine too. Not trusting that that's you know that that's a legitimate feeling. But if you just like blindly follow everything that Apple tells you and every deal they hand on the table because you feel like they're the only ones that can help you no matter what, um, you're one of the ones that belong in Group B, and you walk in with your lube and just say, "Give me it." <laughs> so uh, I. You know, I, I got pretty upset when I seen that this morning, and, and, I, and I'm keeping this kind of cool because I, I just couldn't believe all the people that are dogging the independent repair and saying there's no way that you can fix this. That's hogwash because the independent repair right now is doing a far better job than Apple is. That's all I got to say for now. I got some new equipment coming for the microscope. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more demonstrations on this stuff, but um, I just really felt like much of this stuff needed said. I might cut some of it out, but um, a lot of it I won't. I've got to get busy and start fixing iPhone 6 Plus touch defects for all of you that think this problem don't exist. Have a good day, everybody.